So we'll send things back to Dana. John, thank you. It is now up to the state of New York to decide whether an all-female volunteer ENT company can get a license to operate an ambulance. This is a contentious issue in the Orthodox Jewish community in Brooklyn, where there has long been an ambulance service, but it's run only by men. CBS and New York's Lisa Rosner reports. I fell down into the chicken soup and got burned on my buttocks and my thighs. When a burning pot of chicken soup spilled on her, this woman in the Orthodox Jewish community who wanted to conceal her identity called the all-women emergency response team known as Ezra's Nashim. I didn't have to call any of the Hats, um, members of the men's organization, Hatzalah, because I was so embarrassed. It, it was a very private spot. It saved me a lot of shame from, the, from being seen by... Uh, Males. Shame because in the Orthodox Jewish community, modesty is a fundamental value. Men and women who are not married don't touch each other. And in public, women cover their hair and most of their skin. For 50 years, Hatsola, the male volunteer ambulance corps, has served the community, but it does not accept women paramedics. PBS's POV documentary titled 93 Queen by Paula Eiselt profiles the upstart Ezra's Nashim. It's a female EMT group to serve women, especially in emergency situations such as childbirth or the bathroom. My first call, believe it or not, was a woman who fell in her shower. If you are completely naked, um, your hot soul of next door neighbor shows up, and then you see him on a, on a wedding or any other event, you don't want him to, to see you all the time that, you know, it's uncomfortable. But Hatsola and dozens of rabbis argue in emergency situations, Jewish law does permit male paramedics to treat women. And as a policy, a Hatsola member will give the call to a different paramedic if the patient is a neighbor who is uncomfortable. Ezra's Nashim argues the need for their 40 women paramedics is increasing and that this year alone they received 450 calls. Currently, volunteers respond to calls with two-way radios. Hi, hi, hi. And each has medical gear in their personal car. The response time is around eight minutes. We have to go to the speed limit. We're not allowed to have license sirens on our car. Um, and, and to get there, it's, it's, it doubles the time. Ezra's Nashim says with an ambulance license, they could have lights and sirens in paramedics' cars in addition to an ambulance. Now, when someone needs to go to the hospital, the organization calls 911 and an FDNY ambulance transports them. 911, the fire department, they're wonderful. They're great. I mean, we use them as uh, transport. But some of the ladies still prefer to say, why don't you have your own ambulance? That will now be decided by the New York State Department of Health because the local New York City Council that oversees who gets an ambulance license couldn't decide. At a previous hearing, Rabbi Yechiel Kaufman testified on behalf of dozens of rabbis. In the provision of virtual service is absolutely not required from a modesty perspective and in fact reduces the health and safety of the community. We don't have a problem with Atala. They are doing an amazing job. But, uh, you know, do you have room for women? Can we do this together? We wanted to ask Hatsola why not have a women's unit that can respond to emergencies, and shouldn't women have a right to serve in that capacity? No response. We can still do it. I mean, uh, the need is there. It's still calling us. We can't just close up shop. And in fact, they're accepting volunteer applications for 2020 while they wait for the state to validate them. In Borough Park, Brooklyn, Lisa Rosner, CBSN New York. An update now on a hit 